Yeah, what's good, Joe? It's your man, the bigger P, and i um, here to share my thoughts on uh, the Showtime card from last night. Um, overall, the undercard went the way it was supposed to go. Um, on paper, I was like, when I first, when the undercard was first announced, I was not impressed. I was not impressed at all. I thought for a main event like this, Unification, the undercard should have been way better than what it was um, on paper. So I was uh, I was a little bit disappointed. Um, so, I mean, I, I knew, just thinking about it, I, I just knew that the undercard wasn't going to be anything special. Although I had a little hope for the first one, which was Barrios versus uh, Roman. Um, I thought maybe it would be a little bit competitive. Um, but instead, it was just a a sparring session that got increasingly brutal as it went on. Um, probably should have been stopped way before it, it was. I think it stopped. It was stopped in the eighth or the ninth round. Um, yeah, Barrios was just whooping on Roman. Roman was just over there. I mean, uh, it was funny too because Roman spit out his mouthpiece in that fight, and the ref didn't take a point. Or stop the fight, for that matter. I mean, he literally stood up, and it wasn't like the mouthpiece got knocked out of his mouth right in the center or like that. His mouthpiece just, he just, he spelled his mouthpiece. You know, something like that, you know, the reference, you either take the point or you stop the fight. In this case, it's probably been better to stop the fight, but um, he didn't. You know, the referee let it continue, and then the next round, you know, took some more punishment, and then that was it. Um... Like I said, it was it wasn't anything special. It was just what it was. It lasted a little bit too long. But Barrios did his thing. You can't uh, and you can't knock that. So um, kudos to the young man. Um, the next fight too was another fight that I, I thought was also kind of like nah. Uh, at least for, not for this card. I mean, you have Ortiz versus uh, Kujanu. Um, Kujanu, I've seen fight twice. The first time was in that ESPN tournament, that boxing tournament, one of the final uh, Friday Night Fights, and he got KO'd pretty quickly uh, by, was it, Donovan Dennis. It was it was pretty brutal, too. And he didn't show nothing there. And then later on, he was a last-minute replacement for Joseph Parker um, when he challenged for the WBO heavyweight title. Kojanu is probably one of the worst title challengers ever, <laughs> by the way. And um, it also didn't help that Kojanu was clowning and making Parker look Ultra silly in this in this fight. Um, it was it was a fight that was not. It was a fight that I didn't expect to go this is And I looked at it, and this is where I started looking at Parker a little funny um, after this fight. But nonetheless, I thought I was like, yeah, because I knew it was gonna get brutally KO'd. And then in this fight, you know, because I was trying to do that clowning shit, and I was like, man, it's only a matter of time. It's only a matter of time before Ortiz caught up with him. And sure enough. A right hook and a brutal left hand put him out. Um, and then, or uh, Kujanu had probably the weirdest reaction too. Like he, he thought he was actually getting to his feet. Then after he started stumbling, he went down. And he got back up, and the referee stopped. And he's over there complaining. I'm like, guy, if you really wanted to continue this fight, you would have stayed on your feet. And cleared your head, or you at least stay down and clear your head a little bit, and take the count, take the stand, take the take the mandatory eight, and then get to your feet. But uh, at least that went quick. Um, Ortiz got his confidence builder, you know, back. So um, I know, and you know, that little piece about his daughter in interview that was wonderful to hear. Uh, Ortiz, of course, you know, just have to stay in condensed, uh, stay, you know. You know, stay in the hunt for either a shot, another shot at Wilder, or a shot at uh, at Joshua. It's either one or the other. Um, but like I said, you know, at least he scored a brutal KO on a nationally televised card. So kudos to him and kudos to his daughter as well. Uh, Kojanu, I hope I just don't see him fight again. <laughs> uh, straight up, uh, three fights in a row. That just uh, yeah, three fights of his. I think that's more than enough. Um, regarding him. And then we have the main event, which on paper, I was like, okay, this is going to be excellent. You have Robert Easter Jr., the IBF uh, lightweight champion, and you have Mikey Garcia, who held the WBC lightweight championship. Um, um, when this fight is not, I was like, hey, great, you know, because if you 
listen to me on my other videos, I've always been a fan of unifications. I figured if you're a champion in there and you're not actively calling out other champions to try to unify, uh, I think you're doing yourself and the division and boxing a great disservice not to call out the other champions in that division. And then they were making the big thing like, oh, you know, this is the first division, this is the first unification attempt since the super all-time classic, probably by, of course, I think the greatest fight I've ever seen in my boxing lifetime, um, Diego Corrales and Jose Luis Castillo. And then they kept on mentioning that. It's like, oh, can this fight be this way? Now, I, 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 now of course, when although I appreciate the mention because, you know, mentioning that fight, then you get to see them, because Showtime aired that fight, of course, so you get to see Showtime um, air the highlights about it, and there's some of the articles that they wrote about it, and, you know, I'm all for mentioning that fight, because, like I said, it's the greatest fight I've ever seen. Um, but trying to compare that fight as a unification to that fight, to uh, to this fight with Garcia and Easter, I think, you know, was not, a, you know, was not the best thing in the world. Even though both of them are... You know, both of them are capable of being entertaining fights. You know, you know, Castillo and Corrales is something that can stand on its own. You know, so um, yeah, so the build for it was good. Um, the weigh-in I thought was kind of uh, crazy. Um, prior to this thing, I was, I was I was saying to myself, Robert Easter looked like he was like starving, like he had that starving face. You know, his long face, his cheekbones was all pronounced and stuff like that. So I thought this man here is starving. You know, he's five eleven. And, you know, he's fighting out lightweight, you know. And, and, and that's, and that's, and that's kind of crazy in itself. And he came in lighter than Mikey, too, at 130. It was like 134, man. I was like, that, that, I was like that's incredible. And then you have Mikey, who, in what, one of his probably few um, negatives is the fact that, you know, he's not as, although he makes his weight, He's not as disciplined with it. And possibly it's either a you know, trying to fight human nature or fight, you know, trying to, I mean, lightweight. I mean, I mean, this guy was a, the guy was a featherweight, you know what I'm saying? So I know I could, I still remember him, you know, trying to make that weight and damn near passing out. I still remember that two day special and that was kind of crazy. Uh, lightweight, I mean, he made it on the dot, but it, almost immediately after that, he was just like, he, he zipped to the back and he even like stayed. For the post fight in it, uh, for the post way interview, and Easter was over there, rah rah this, rah rah that. He was amped, so I'm like, okay, you know, Easter might do something. Now, in terms of what I thought how the fight would go, I thought Mike would win by decision. The reason why I think that is, it's mostly because of Easter. Um, Easter's last four fights, three of them I thought he lost. Um, but at least, I mean, the comedy fight I thought was a close loss. Um, I think I had it like 114, 113. Uh, Shafikov, I thought, was a clear loss. I mean, I had that, I had that like 116, 112. And um, Fortuna, I had it, like, I think it was like a two point. It was, it, it was like a two point. I think it, it, it might have been like one. No, it was like one. I think it was like 114, 113. Something like that. I don't remember my card for that. But I, I thought that in those three fights, Easter clearly, uh, clearly lost those fights. And the reason why is, I mean, Easter it has physical gifts. You know, when he first came on the scene, I'm like, okay, this is the, this guy might be the 135 version of uh, Paul the Punisher Williams. And, and most people know Paul was one of my favorite fighters to watch because Paul was a, a, was a unicorn in boxing. Um, so I was like, okay, you see it, you see someone like the bill like that. I was like, okay, you can see that maybe they'll catch a little wreck a little bit. But, you know, unfortunately, you know, came down to earth and he realized that um, Easter is not that type of fighter. Um, and I thought, like, I mean, the man was giving up way too much physical of his physical advantages to fighters that I thought were maybe a little were lesser than he was. So that's why I didn't have the confidence to say, okay, Easter, although has the reach, could, can punch, has the height, well, you know, would be enough to fight, you know, to beat someone like Mikey Garcia. Who I think is supremely skilled, um, solid chin, solid power, solid fundamentals, uh, great footwork, uh, all these things. I mean, Mikey doesn't. Mikey has very few weaknesses in his game, and certainly not weaknesses. I didn't think that 
um, Easter could exploit. And I was hoping that maybe, maybe, maybe him going to Cunningham, they'll be like, oh, okay, you know, maybe Cunningham might add a little that, may add that extra wrinkle or extra thing to his game that might make this fight what I thought it would be. Fortunately, that was not the case. Um, on activity alone in the first half, or maybe the first half in the fight, save for the fight that Easter, save for the round that Easter went down in, you know, Easter just off activity was. You know, he, he, he won his rounds. Uh, he won enough rounds, at least to say, okay, you know, um, some of them were, were close, some of them were not close. Some of them were close, some of them were not close. Um, but after the, after the, in the second half of the fight, I think it, it, it completely changed. Like, Mikey was able to slip, you know, he was able to slip the jab and consistently find his way inside Easter, which I couldn't believe. And also, I couldn't believe that Mikey was actually able to bully Robert Easton. Uh, that was something I was also su I was also surprised about. And he had Mikey had Easton to the point where usually it's pressure that makes fighters gas out in some way, either like you know it's either mentally taxing and or physically taxing. Mikey wasn't really doing all that. Mikey's Mikey had his jab going in in that fight. I mean, the only thing I could say that Mikey did wrong was the fact that I think some of Easter's footwork um, had him a little uh, off kilter a little bit. Like, I mean, Easter doesn't have. I mean, Easter's footwork is what it is. It's nothing outstanding, but it just seemed like you know he was able to get away more from Mikey. Until like the ninth round, in the ninth round where I think Easter lands a nice shot that busts the uh, Mikey's nose. I don't know if it was just a normal bloody nose or a broken nose because of the, you know broken bloody nose, but uh, whatever whatever that was, Mikey just turned it up like crazy and started ripping him upstairs and downstairs. And by the end of that round, Easter had no legs left, absolutely none. And I, I didn't give him one round. It was just pretty much Easter was on the ropes and Mikey was punching through his guard. Um, he, he, he punished the guy. I mean, it was, I mean, Easter, hey, this is, I think I said it in one of my prediction videos, I keep it on my Instagram, and then also on my, uh, also on the Ring Gang Radio, um, Instagram that I'm part of. I said the same thing. I didn't think Mikey would knock him out because I thought Easter had a good chance, good recovery powers. I mean, it was, I was right on that aspect because, I mean, Easter absorbed a slow beating. You know, all the way up to the bell. Like he, he, he didn't have. He was done. He had nothing. Like he couldn't. I mean, he tried. I think. I mean, I think one of the things he tried. He tried to throw him one of the lead uppercut, and because Mikey was open for that, but he tried it once, and that was just about it. And I didn't see it land clean. I mean, it landed. I didn't know if it landed cleanly enough, or Mikey took it on his gloves, or whatever. But whatever it was, he didn't try it again because I think he was just mentally and physically just beat. Um, I think I scored the fight like 118, 109. I think I gave Easter like two rounds. And those were the two early rounds where I thought where, you know, Easter probably won him clear enough, you could say. I mean, you could probably, I mean, there are other close rounds in the first half of the fight, too. And then you can see why the judges disparity, the disparity of the scores of the judges, you know, that most people thought, okay, some of those fights were, you know, some of the rounds were close. But um, it was very clear that Mikey won this fight. Clear. And, uh, now he holds two of the belts in this division. I think now he probably got the ring title as well. Uh, Easter, though, I was impressed with Easter with his decorum at the end of the fight. I mean, he acquitted himself well. I mean, he he acknowledged that he took he took his loss like a man, like a champion. So uh, I was thoroughly impressed by that. You don't see that a lot. You don't see a lot of young fighters just taking taking things in stride. You know, so I I, I was I was happy to see that. Um, Easter, I'm pretty sure, must have will learn a lot from this fight, and I think, I mean, I mean he'll be back. Now, wh whether or not he could, he's got to continue doing this at, at lightweight or go up, because I mean, the man has the frame. I mean, Easter has a frame that he can go up to welterweight at some point and not, you know, not kill his body the way he's doing. But like I said, you know, I think that's probably in time it remains to be seen. Um, you know, just go back to the draw board and just be a better fighter. Uh, as for Mikey, you know, Mikey is, um, you know, he has two t he has two belts. 
Now, if I was him, I would try to call out Lomachenko because Lomachenko holds the uh, the WBA belt, and then the WBA belt, unfortunately, is is a uh, Ray Beltran. Um, those two fighters happen to be our Aram fighters, and everyone knows that Mikey and, and Bob Aram don't have a relationship of that nature. Even though I don't think there's a lot of red tape, because I don't think Mikey has a, pro I don't think Mikey has any issues, promotional issues, because he's not, as far as I mean, he's not with Heyman. He's, he's doing his own thing. So there's not that political issue, but I just don't think Mikey would want to put money in Aaron's pocket anymore, and or vice versa. And even though I think uh, Lomachenko versus Garcia would be a hell of a fight, and for that. But Mikey has some other plans. I mean, he was calling out Errol Spence. Um, you know, and this shit is and that shit is crazy. I mean, granted, at least Mikey at least made his stop at 140. So it's not like it's a huge jump. Nothing like what Broner did as lightweight champion and then goes all the way up and beats Pollock for the welterweight division without, you know, without making one stop at 140. I mean, he went down to 140 and won the belt, but that's just something different. Mikey's actually at least has the 140 expense. He's trying to go up to welterweight to face Errol Spence. Why Errol Spence of all people? I don't know. I mean, some of yeah, you know, like you want to chase. Some fighters want to chase greatness. Some people want to change, uh, chase challenges. And Errol Spence is a challenge, especially for a lightweight fight. And you can tell Errol Spence wants that fight. And you know, Errol Spence is probably frothing in the mouth um, um, to beat up Mikey. Can it, do I think he do? Yes, it's because uh, Spence is a big guy. For his side, you know, for that for that division, I mean, he's, I mean, he's he probably walks around now probably 180, 190 easy outside of this. Um, you know, Spence is a, Spence is a physically is a physically uh, demanding type of uh, fighter. You know, it's, even for Mikey, who's 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 pretty strong himself. I mean, in terms, of, I think he might be buying up more more than he can chew going after Spence. Um, but I can also see why he may do that because I mean Spence right now still has his little flaws. Um, you know, for as much as his power and the speed and the stamina is concerned, I mean he's top notch in the chin. You know, he he still has some boxing flaws that needs to iron out, and I could probably see why Mikey why Mikey wants to go after him. Um, probably a lot easier for that than you know, let's say going after Terence Crawford, you know, per se, who. I think we know who would put, who I think would give Mikey a good boxing lesson, but that's not you know that's for another hypothetical type of uh, video or whatever. I feel like making that video, but um, hey, if he wants to go after Spence and he want to do that this year, hey, I'm all for it. Um, you know, you know, Mikey takes away um, Spence's zero becomes what's what champion. You know, do we do? And there's no, I mean, dude, it's just nothing more than strengthening his already Hall of Fame credentials, you know? Uh, and then Spence, of course, gives him a fight. You know, if he gets that fight with Mikey, and, you know, it, it will make the other welterweights look bad, that have, you know, that have been trying to get at him, you know, for some unification. I mean, the man holds the man holds a welterweight belt, too. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But, um, yeah, the card, I mean, the card was cool. I mean, the undercard, I mean, they went the way they went. I mean, at least there wasn't that much of a struggle to watch them. It's just, you just wish there were just better fights. Um, and uh, I did watch some of the ones that they, they streamed. The Claymont versus uh, Fabian Maidana fight it was okay. Um, it was kind of slow, but Maidana at least managed to put him away. That was the first time Claymont, like, law, um, and the guy who has already been in the ring with uh, Lexa Molina and Terrence Crawford and Pedraza, so you know that, that that's not that's not, that's a good zero. That's a good uh, scalp to get on your plate. You know what I'm saying? So you know, and there was another fight on there that I watched and I, I completely forgot. Oh, the Balderas fight. Uh, yeah, because you know Showtime was letting, you know was going on and on and on about his uh, biography. And Balderas was highly impressive. I mean, I mean. You know, he basically did what he had to do. It was a sparring type of fight, but he showed out, and that was all. That was, a, that was all you could. That's all you could ask for. So, kudos to him about that. Um, and before I go, I want to bring up another mention to another card that happened, uh, the Hearn card. Um, the Hearn card, by the way, was outstanding. 
for what it was, culminating with the two with the heavyweight co-main event uh, with Derek Chisora and Carlos Takam, which was pretty much one of those old school heavyweight type of slugfest, man. Uh, highly impressed, and then I thought Takam, this would be the fight where Takam will at least will get that will get that KO over a good name, and then you know. Chisar found something I didn't think he even had and dropped him. To come got back up. And then Chisar laid him out. I'm talking about knock the fuck out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, I was like, man, this fight was awesome. And then the main event of it was Dillian White versus Joseph Parker. Now, I'm not a fan of Parker. I don't think he really, I'm not, his fights are not really interesting to me. And Dillian White is, like, his fight with, um, uh, Hellenius, you know, and that fight was boring, and then the fight with uh, Brown was also kind of boring until he knocked him out. So I was not expecting anything spectacular, and we got a pretty good fight out of it. I mean, he had his drama. I mean, White was bullying Parker. Uh, the questionable knockdown in the third round, which is due to headbutt, and then the legit as fuck knockdown in the ninth round with the left hook. Have Parker all types of you know near gone, and uh, Parker getting bullied in this fight. I was thinking to myself, man, he's got to show something, and he showed it in the last two rounds, especially the final round. The final round might it might be around the year candidate because uh, Parker tried his hardest to get White the fuck up out of here, man. Like he he knocked him down like at, like within uh, the last thirty seconds of the fight. And then when that happened, you know, I think all the fight went out of, out of White. Uh, and I was thinking to myself, if it happened a little bit sooner than this, I think Parker probably could have finished it. But once White went down in that final round and Parker moved in, yeah, he, there, there was no more. He, he he was like, nah, man, I'm not going to try. No more trade. Like, he, <laughs> I mean, he, he, he pulled a, a good veteran move, man. Like, he held on, held on to the ropes. And, uh, there was, uh, yeah, there was no more after that. So he was able to preserve that and, uh, you know, get the victory. The funny thing is, too, um, and I think I read this on a tweet, that if the referee didn't count that first knockdown against Parker, uh, the fight could have been a split draw. And, you know, but, I mean, either way, I did feel that Parker lost that fight. It wasn't, I, mean, I didn't think it was that close. I mean, Parker, like I said, he showed something, at least, if he was getting bullied, but at least he showed something to actually try to put the man away, and he almost did it. But, um, yeah, I mean, it was a highly entertaining fight. I mean, it keeps White in line for a possible shot with Joshua, a rematch with Joshua. Um, I don't know where he's going to go with Wilder. Wilder is probably more of a wild card than for Parker. I just think that he probably needs a new trainer, someone that will make him a little bit more aggressive than what he is. I mean, you can tell Parker has, has some skills. Has some, but he, he's just he's missing an intangible, uh, an aggressive atan uh, tangible, and uh, once he finds that, I, I think he could actually be he, he'll actually grow as a fighter, but um, remains to be seen. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Showtime card and then the Hearn card. And the Hearn card, I hope because it was probably one of the best ones I've seen in a while. I hope they continues that when that service is launched, and then. Eventually, they have, you know, they have, I know he has to play a card in Chicago. And then the card in Providence, hopefully it's in Providence with uh, Boo Boo and uh, Billy Joe Saunders. I hope they because I want to be there in Providence for that fight. You know, my area does not get big fights, significant fights, often. It's been a while. It's actually been a couple years. And um, I'm tired of getting on a plane or getting on a bus to watch a fight. I just want to drive in my own car and get this fight. So, Hearn, I'm putting it out there. I'm putting it in the putting it in the air. Keep that fight in Providence. All right. But yeah, that's a, those are my thoughts on those two cards. So until next time, peace.